Run, Ricky, run. St. John's head basketball coach Rick Pitino has hit the ground running, adding transfers and recruits to the roster, and the man ain't even done yet. We got New York Post basketball reporter Zach Braziller on the line because he's got some articles on the site. We need to know what Coach Patino's been up to. Zach, what's going on? It's been about two months since uh, Coach Patino <laughs> took the job. He's added, he's subtracted to the roster. So what grade would you give him so far and why? I, I mean, I don't think you can give him anything less than an A. Um, well, I would say most experts and coaches think he's built an NCAA tournament team for next year. Um, uh, you know, it, obviously there were a few misses, but when you consider what he's brought in, whether it's the nation's number two leading scorer last year from out of uh, Penn, Jordan Dingle, brought in some really good wing players, um, RJ Lewis from UMass, Glenn Taylor from Oregon State, landed a top 150 high school player, Brady, Brady Dunlap. He kept Joel Soriano, the best player from last year's team. I, um, I don't think you give him anything less than an A and uh, you know, it doesn't sound like they're done, which is um, kind of a surprise. I thought this class was done when they landed Kansas big man Zuby LG04. But there is now news that um, Simeon Wilcher, a top 30 high school prospect out of New Jersey, who just got out of release from his letter of intent from North Carolina, is on campus today and is visiting. And he's a really good player. And uh, may, they get him. I might have to move that grade up to an A+. Plus. <laughs> I, uh, you, you're scaling it like my high school teachers. I love it. Uh, so you, you mentioned them because I was going to ask you in this next question, like who else in this recruiting class are they going after? You mentioned one guy. Is there anyone else out there? And uh, what, what, what do these guys, could, what could they bring to this team? No, I mean, look, right now I, outside of Wiltshire, I think they're kind of, they're kind of done and they're looking at 2020 the, the following year. But Wiltshire is someone they would really like to add. He's, He's a fantastic talent. He, he is one of the best players on Roselle Catholic, which is one of the best teams in the country. He's a six-four guard who could really do it. We could really do it all. He was signed to North Carolina. They had a few things go on there with um, a few, adding a few transfer guards, and then a top ten prospect out of New Jersey, Elliot Cadeau, reclassed for this coming season. So the role was kind of uncertain in North Carolina, and he asked for his release. I was told it wasn't an easy decision. It was something the family really mulled over for a while. But I do know there's a lot of interest from his side into playing for St. John's and playing for Rick Pitino. You know, it's funny. I asked, I asked the source, you know, what, why not Rutgers or Seton Hall? He's a Jersey kid. And the source said, is Rick Pitino coaching those schools? Um, which kind of tells you all you need to know about, you know, the, you know, the relevancy of Rick Pitino, even at the age of 70, at the end of a Hall of Fame career, he still matters. You know, he's he's obviously known for his development and producing pros. And that's, you know, that's just such a huge thing right now um, in, in college basketball. Guys want to play at the next level. And and then, Nick, look, they're going to be playing a ton of games at the Garden St. John's. There's going to be a big spotlight. And, I mean, it sounds like they have a legit shot of getting him, which to me would even further elevate what is a pretty good roster. Yeah, and it sounds like, you know, he's hit the ground running. He has a lot in terms of New York City to kind of draw these kids in. And recruiting is its own season within itself. So when do they wrap up the recruiting and get to basketball? And, and like, what's the next order of business for Coach Patino and his staff? Um, well, the new players will be on campus in, in, you know, in about 10 days to two weeks. They'll start workouts. I believe it's around June 22nd. Now, not everyone will be there. One of the Iona players, probably one of their best players from last year, Denise Jenkins, has to graduate to be eligible immediately. So he's not going to be on campus until the fall semester, the start of, I guess, the end of August, early September. So he won't be there. But for the most part, most of the new roster will be there for summer sessions and workouts starting June 22nd. So the team will get, you know, we'll get a lot, we'll get time together. To, it is obviously it's a completely new team, basically. Just Joel Soriano and Drissa Treor um, are back. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of new faces, a lot of learning. So they will have time this summer. And look, Patino is best. We all know he's a great in-game coach, but he's best known for his player development, and, you know, his player development sessions. And that's something that will really get going here in a few weeks. And, you know, look forward to being to be out there a few times and talk to you guys then. Uh, look, recruiting never ends there. It just it, there's always more to do. Um, so they will obviously be busy. There's going to be live periods in, in, you know, in June and July where they'll be out seeing players. But starting in a few weeks, they'll start to kind of really see what they have here with these recruits.
He's got the groceries, and now it's time to cook. Zach Brazilla, thanks for joining us. Hey, anytime, guys.